Hello and welcome. My name is Eddie Ambler. In this demo, we will go through creating a VMDB system from a backup using the OCI console. To begin the process of creating a VMDB system from a backup, open the navigation menu. Click on Oracle Database, then click on Oracle Base Database VM. Validate that the compartment selected is where the source DB system is located. In the list of DB systems, find the VM DB system whose backup you want to use to create a new DB system and click its highlighted name. For our demo, we will select My Demo DB System for the DB system name. On the DB systems details page, if you scroll down, you will see the database listed that resides on the DB system. Click on the My19C CDB database name to go to the database details page. Under the backup section, note that the automatic backup feature is enabled. Under the More Actions tab, select Create Database from Backup. This will bring up the Create Database from Backup window. We can choose what backup timestamp to use and if we will be using an existing DB system or creating a new DB system. For our demo, we will select the option to create database from last backup and to create a new DB system. Click on Create to proceed. On this screen, validate that the compartment is where you want your new DB system to reside. Next, enter a friendly display name for the new DB system name that we will create from the backup. For our demo, we will use My DB System from Backup for the display name. Next, we will need to select a shape type. As you can see, there are two to choose from, virtual machine or bare metal. For our demo, we will select virtual machine. Next, we will need to select a shape. On the right side, let's click on change shape. On the change shape display page, let's select VM standard 2.2 for the new shape that we will use in our new DB system. Click on select a shape to proceed. Under configure the DB system, Let's select the total node count as 2. This will automatically set the database software version to Enterprise Edition Extreme Performance, which is required to support Rack or Active Data Guard features. Now let's choose the type of storage management software that we will use with our database VM. You can choose between Grid Infrastructure or Logical Volume Manager for the storage management software. Since Logical Volume Manager is only available for single node VM systems, we will select Grid Infrastructure, which uses ASM for the database storage management. Next, we will configure the amount of storage that we want provision to store our data. We will accept the default of 256 gigabytes for our demo. The OCI wizard will automatically calculate any additional storage needed for things like redo and archive logging and report it as part of the total storage field. For the optional cluster name, we will enter my backup class for the name. SSH keys provide you SSH access to the virtual machine DB systems. To add the SSH public key portion of the key pair, you are provided with three options. One, generate the SSH key pair from the OCI console. Two, upload the public SSH key file from a previously created set of keys. Three, paste the public SSH key into the console. For our demo, we will paste the public SSH key value from a previously generated key pair. We now need to select the license type that we want to use for the new virtual machine DB system. The options are license included, or bring your own license. For our demo, we will select bring your own license. In the network information section, use the pull down menu to select the VCN in which to launch the DB system. For our demo, let's select my demo VCN. For the client subnet, use the pull down menu to select the client subnet to which the DB system should attach. For our demo, let's select public subnet my demo VCN. For the network security groups, known as NSGs, you can optionally specify one or more NSGs for your DB system. NSGs function as virtual firewalls, allowing you to apply a set of ingress and egress security rules to your DB system. For our demo, we will leave the Use Network Security Groups box unchecked. The hostname prefix 
forms the first portion of the DB system's host name and will be used as part of the fully qualified domain name. For Rack Systems, the database service automatically appends a node number after the host name prefix. For a demo, we will enter new DB sys for the host name prefix. For the host domain name, note how the subnet DNS and VCN label is used to auto generate the host domain name. Notice that the host and domain URL combines the host and domain names to display the fully qualified domain name for the database. Under Show Advanced Options, under the Management tab, you're able to select an optional fault domain for your DB system as well as a new time zone. Under the Tags tab, you can optionally apply tags to help you organize and track your resources. If you're not sure if you should apply tags, then skip this option for now. You can apply tags later. Click on Next to proceed to entering information for the initial database. For our demo, enter My19C CDB for the database name. For the database unique name suffix, enter from Backup. Notice that the database unique name is a combination of the database name and the database unique name suffix. To select the image for the new DB system, click on the Change Database Image button. This will bring up the Select a Database Software Image pop-up window. Validate the compartment shown is where you want the new DB system to reside. Click on the drop-down box to select a database version for the new DB system. For our demo, we will select 19C. Note that there is also a custom image of 1914 that we could have selected as well. Click on the select button to proceed. Enter a strong password for the sys user. The password must be from 9 to 30 characters and contains at least two of each of the following types of characters. Uppercase, lowercase, numeric, special characters which must be an underscore, pound sign, or a dash. This password will be used for the Sys and System Administrator accounts. Confirm the password by re-entering it. Enter the source database's TDE wallet or Armin password. Click on Create DB Systems to proceed. On the DB Systems details page that is displayed, you will see the name that we chose for our DB system. You'll also notice that it has a state of provisioning. If you scroll down and click on work requests under resources, then click on the create DB systems from backup operation, you will see the work request being displayed that has a state of in progress. The work request will allow you to monitor the progress of the operation, showing you the log messages as the process continues. When the work request successfully completes, the state will change from in progress to succeeded. Now that our Create DB System work request shows the status of succeeded, click on the DB Systems Details link in the breadcrumb trail. This will render the DB Systems Details page, while you note that our DB System has the display name that we selected, a state of available and a networking configuration that we specified. Notice the VCN is using My Demo VCN, the client subnet is using public subnet My Demo VCN, and that the cluster name assigned is the cluster name that we specified of My Backup Clus. As we scroll down to the database section, we will see the name of our container database. You'll see that it has a database unique name of My19CCDB underscore from backup which we specified in the configuration, and it has a state of available. Let's click on the highlighted name of My19C CDB to go to the database details page. On the database details page, you'll notice that we have a state of available, and under the backup section, you'll notice that the automatic backup has a status of disabled, although our source database system had the automatic backups enabled. So if you require automatic backups, this is a feature that you will need to configure. If we scroll down on the left rail under resources and click on pluggable databases, 
we will see a list of all of the databases that were available to us on the source database. You'll see their names listed here under name and that all of them have a state of available. Congratulations on accomplishing the mission to create your new DB system from an OCI backup.